You are now tuned in to Go Time Dolphins with Charlie Touche and Kadeem Simmons, the Miami Dolphins podcast that's for the fans and by the fans. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Don't waste no time. Another Dolphins loss. At this point, it's just a matter of how badly do they lose, how how heartbreaking, you know, is it a last second defeat? Is it a stay close until the fourth quarter and just not pan out, I guess? Um five yard lee, what did you make of the twenty six eleven defeat to the Buffalo Bills this week? Um, like you say, I don't think there's any it's not a shock. If anything, to be honest, it's a shock that it's as close as it was. I think most people expected this to be a bit of a bloodbath after the uh, the week two loss to the Bills. Um, and to be honest, I choose to look at some of the positives out of this, I think. Like, I think the, the team performed way better than, than I expected for most for the most part today. Um, seemed like Brian Flores was calling the defense. Um, it seemed a lot more aggressive. Uh, I think until the to the offense kind of hung about to dry there a little bit in the third quarter, you know they've been particularly competitive. Um, so I, I think that you know the last touchdown probably flatters the Bills a bit on the on the score sheet. Really, it's more like a 19-11 loss. I'd, I'd say you know some things have picked up. Bear in mind the defense hasn't really seemed to stop anyone for the past three weeks. Um, I, I'd say that's good. I mean. <laughs> The, the offense, the offense is still, still head scratching. But it's funny you said about the defense not getting stopped. Um, Xavier Howard said, and I quote: "We, we couldn't get off the field on third down. On third down, we expect to get off the field and give the ball back to the offense. We weren't able to do that today. Like that was it the first or second touchdown where like Jalen Phillips has Josh Allen, and he doesn't tackle him, and then at that point it's an easy touchdown. It's." Listen, I'm not. I'm in no way blaming the defense. This was a free, 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 free game for a very, very long time. And yeah. you know, at half it was free, free. I felt like the Bills were doing everything to give the game to the Dolphins, and the Dolphins were doing everything to not win the game. You know, Jason Sanders, you know, at one point one of the best kickers in the league, misses a very easy field goal. Um, right before half, the Dolphins driving down the field, you get that awful awful turnover and then at that point it's just I've, I've for me personally after that turnover it was like it's gonna be one of those days again um and i didn't it's like i didn't expect to, to win this game i just wanted us to keep it close and for two have and for two to have a perfect game and he didn't have a perfect game he had the fumble which we recovered he had an interception and of course you know miami dolphins fans are like we'll go get watson um what do you make of Tua's performance? Uh, I was, I, to be honest, I was happy enough with it. I think he's played well the last few weeks. I thought he played well in this game. He gave up the fumble. That you know, let's be honest, it was, it was on a quick pressure. Does he need to hold on to it? Yes, but and the interception. I'll be honest, I don't really care about the interception at the end of this game. Fourth down, you've got to do something. Throw it up and give someone a chance. Hill. Someone comes down to it. Great. If not, you lost the game anyway. So it's kind of irrelevant how it, how it actually panned out you know it goes down as an interception but um you know i'd rather that than just taking the sack and not throwing it you might as well you might as well at least throw it and see if see if someone can make something happen let's be honest if you're a team that's one of six you don't make things happen and you do all these things to shoot yourself in the foot i think until you overcome your own mistakes in one of these games we won't see it get better you've got to kind of break break the back of it by just overcoming these stupid mistakes just once, you know, like the, the, the Bills drive there where we gave away consecutive um, penalties on third downs to extend the drive. The Bills end up scoring a touchdown. Like, you know, there was nothing to do with the Bills. There was everything to do with us extending the drive for them. You know, it's, and that, that's what a losing team does. Yeah. Um, I haven't even introduced a podcast. It's um, Go Time Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins podcast that goes not only across the pond, but across the world. I'm Kadeem Simmons. Do not got Charlie Touche with us? He'll be back very, very soon. So, massive shout out to Five Yard Lee for joining us. Um, 
again, spoke to Charlie today. Charlie said, Lee, thank you very much for, <laughs> you know, jumping in late notice. And, you know, me and you haven't seen each other since the Jags game, which, again, was just... That, that was meant to be the turning point of the season. We were meant to win yeah. that game, beat the Falcons, and at this point, we're 1-7. The season is officially done. And for me, it's just about seeing what we have. And, with the, and again, like, as... As we record, I'm trying to see what Brian Flores says. I'm trying to see what anyone says. Um, you know, I'm seeing reporter Omar Kelly said saying that I don't want to start speculating why Brian Flores hasn't talked to the media yet, but this is odd. Um, I think we've had Christian Wilkins and Xavier Howard speak to the media so far. No two are, no Brian Flores. Um, listen, I'm seeing the Miami Dolphins fans basically go back and forth over whether the team should go and get. Watson right now and personally I think up until that fumble and that interception Tua had a and had an okay game it was it was it was, it was just same things as we always see bad drops and do you know what I've, I give credit to the to the Bills defense from what I thought you know I haven't seen the game back yet but I felt like the entire game they just sent pressure over and over again it was, and it, it was kind of like until the Dolphin, that to me, the, the game plan on defense was until you can show us that you can protect, you know, when we send five or six, we're going to send the house to Tua and, you know, try and beat us that way. What do you think? I, I mean, if I was an opponent, that's exactly what I'd be doing because we, we can't hold up. Uh, you know, the, the fumble was, wasn't great on Tua, but at the same time, you, you know, the pressure came so quickly and, and there's nowhere for him to step up to because everyone else is collapsing inside as well. You know, it's just a basic, like, fundamental failure of the offensive line at that point. Um, and, and it's caused problems the entire time. I would say, you know, slightly, he, he didn't take any of those open shots that he did that, you know, that killed him in the first matchup against the Bills. But, um, you know, I, I'd play us the same way. I'd send pressure until until we prove we could we can stop it um, or until we prove we could beat it. You know, and let's yeah. be honest, whenever we look like we – we've done something good. You, you get an untimely drop. Like Devontae Parker played well for the entire game, to be honest, until you get the drop. And the drop yeah. was killer. Like, you know, it was a bad drop. And, you know, it goes down as an incompletion on the quarterback when really, like, he delivered the ball in the perfect spot. It's on the receiver. Yeah. I think, like, one play which summed up, which summed up this season so far, and especially this offensive line, I can't remember what down it was, but Ed Oliver beat Robert Hunt. Like, Robert Hunt wasn't even there. And two and three away, but but and I, I think at that point I tweeted, you see how quickly Oliver got to two or like please tell me how any quarterback is meant to do something yeah. when the pass rush is home in one second. Like again, people that say go and get Watson, okay, go get Watson. When defensive linemen are literally on the quarterback as he snapped the ball, what's gonna happen? Yeah, it's not it's not gonna help help the bad play calling that we're seeing, it's not gonna help the bad kind of system they've got implemented where they seem to lose whatever's going well for them just seems to disappear after the first quarter and if the O-line can't hold up they can't hold up against anyone I'm not being funny between me you and Charlie we'd probably get a decent pass rush up against them <laughs> like you know it's and and fine if you want to go and get Watson to prove the point fine but I would say let's why don't we look backwards rather than looking for the next quarterback why don't we look at what Brian Tannehill did when he got an O-line like yeah. this isn't this isn't a problem for Tua. This has been a problem for Ryan Tannehill over seven years as well. Give him an O line, guy now wins games, goes to the playoffs each year. Like he'd now be considered one of the the top ten quarterbacks in the NFL. Yeah, like that, that was a fundamental failing on the Dolphins. Nothing to do with the quarterback play. So to be honest, to go back somewhat to something, something you just said, I'd actually be a buyer at the at the trade deadline because we don't have a first round pick next year. So I need to do everything I can to fix this. And okay, I'm not fixing it for this season. I'm fixing it for the long term. And it involves getting help in now. Fine, do it. Because I need to know what I've got in the quarterback. And the only way to do that is to fix some of the problems. So I'm actually a buyer at this stage based on the fact you traded away future capital. Yeah. Like some of, I think there was a, there was a throw to Devontae Parker, which like there's like three defensive players around Parker. And that is eye of the needle throw. And again, you know, it's, so I, I saw that and I was like, now tell me that Tua can't, you know, pass the ball through the eye of him. Yeah. Because he can. There was that fourth down where he threw the ball to, you know, to Giuseppe down the field. Brilliant. And again, it always come down to 
well, why aren't we seeing more of that? Like, I always find the Dolphins make passes to players in the wrong situation. So there's a lot of, you know, RPO slants to Devontae Parker. Brilliant. Make some RPO slants to Jalen Waddle. So you can beat someone down the field yeah. and off he goes. And, you know, it's... I still <laughs> think it's... You know, I, I said on the, pre- on, on the preview, preview episode, let's not allow Josh Allen to beat us with his legs. Was it first quarter, get the Bills on on third down, and Josh Allen scrambles for like, was it like 24 yards? It's like, how many times have we faced Josh Allen to know that he's going to do that to us? So, um, it, it, it's difficult because everyone knows, anyone who listens to this show knows I am a Tua stan. And when Tua plays bad, I will say, Tua, you play bad. I don't think he played bad today. Yeah. And again, pe- people saying that, you know, is now, now a situation where the play callers are playing a vanilla offense because they've got Tua in. It's like, well, I don't think that's the case because, again, Tua, even in a game like today, has elevated the offense somewhat more than what we saw in yeah. the Bills last time. The, you know, let's be honest, the problem last time was Jacoby was couldn't move the ball at all. Like, we moved the ball safely down the field. You know, we had the, the ridiculous fumble in the red zone, you know, where somehow we managed to... Uh, managed to snap the ball into Gusecki twice um, on separate plays. And then we had, obviously, the missed field goal from from a kick and we expect to make it. Like, let's be honest, at the half, it should have been 9-3. Yeah. Um, you know, th- and those things aren't on tour. Uh, the, the, you know, the ball never got to him on the two snaps that hit Gusecki. He didn't make the kick. Like, uh, you know, I'm a big tour fan as well. Now, I would say one thing that he did wrong, which may be on him, maybe on the coaching staff, I'm not sure, is stop going after Trey White in the fourth quarter. Yeah. I don't care who the player, who the matchup is. You want Mike Gusecki and Trey White, so just go somewhere else. Because he may play after play after play. He's the best best corner on their team. He's one of the best corners in the NFL. Like someone yeah. needs to someone needs to call down to the quarterback. All right, just avoid Trey, Trey White. Yeah. You know? Um, but you try different matchups, just every time seem to be against him. Now maybe that was the that was just the the open guy, the one he felt he could get the ball to. I don't know. Like you say, until we see it back, it's hard to tell. But you know, if I'm if I'm on a coaching staff, I'm just phoning phoning it down. So look, just, just avoid twenty seven. Just just go somewhere else. Especially when the other corner was Levi Wallace. But then you have that situation where I think it's a it might be a curl out or a comeback on the right hand side of the field. And it's thrown to Devontae Parker and you know Levi Wallace kind of I want to say makes a play, but it's just that that oh do not the the annoying thing is, and I said this after the Jags game, I said this after the Falcons game. Tua is at a point where unless he has a perfect game with no interceptions, after the game it's gonna be we need to go and Same get Watson. stuff. Sure. Yeah. Prior to the game, you know, and we're now at a David Watson thing where I think I don't want to talk Watson as we're doing a, a, a review, but I feel like we'd be doing the Dolphins fans a disservice if we don't discuss Watson. So prior to the game, you got now you've got a rap sheet coming out and saying, well, the Dolphins and the Texans have held discussions around Watson. It seems that the Dolphins want Watson to basically settle out of court and get his house in order and make the trade. And it's just like, that is disgusting. Like, you know the guy has done something. If you're basically saying to him, can you settle your, you know, your... 22 yeah. sexual assault allegations, so we, so we can trade you. Just leave the kid alone. I did think it was really interesting on whether it was Thursday or Friday when Flores said in the press conference, two as a quarterback for the rest of 2021. And yeah. everyone seemed to take that as, as if it was gospel. And I was like, so if we believe every word he said then, why don't we believe it every time before when he said two as a quarterback? Yeah. Because if anything, Thursday was the first time he put a time limit on it. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, maybe I'm clutching his straw or seeing something that's not there. I don't know. But, you know, as far as like I said, every time he's been asked, he said two as a guy, like, take it for what it is until they do something that proves otherwise, you know, like make a trade because otherwise it's all hot. It's just hot air. Like, means nothing. I, I would say, you know, free agency, no one knew who what was going on with the Dolphins. Anything we've ever done, no one's known until 10 minutes before it's happened. The fact that people have known about this for eight months just seems surprising to me. Yeah. Um, we've had the first words from Tua. Um, <laughs> so this is from Joe Shad. Tua said, "Miscommunication, bad football, bad operation. Bad operation is a very interesting thing." So obviously, you know, we haven't seen the full quote, but is he saying bad operation on offense, bad operation as a team? Um, he's also said, 
Uh, this is from Josh Houts on um, Tua. I wouldn't question anything that we do throughout practice. I think we work really, really hard. We prepare extremely well as a team. Unfortunately, it hasn't been going our way, but we just have to keep on going. Like, what do you make of what he just said there? Um, I mean, he's, to be fair, he's probably right because we've seen them play well enough to win a lot of these games. We just haven't seen them play well enough consistently. It seems to be the in-game stuff that's the problem, not the... Like, let's be honest, every time they get the ball to start a game, they go down the field and score with two at home. Like, I, I'm not talking about the Jacoby stuff because I didn't think he played well as a, as a backup. Yeah. But like, at the end of games, they've been able to score. Like, okay, they didn't today, but they, they were playing one of the better teams in the NFL today. Like, let's be honest, if they, if they won the last two weeks, we'd be far less upset about a loss today. 100%. And again, it's so, like, it's one of the things where even, it's like, we, we expected to beat the Jags and beat the Falcons, and we expected to lose to Buffalo. Like, even the most diehard positive Dolphins fan looked at the two games against Buffalo and go, at best we split it. At best. Yeah. Everyone else said we're losing both games to Buffalo. Like, the positive to take today was that we lost by 15 points. That's a yeah. positive. Like, yeah. we lost by 15 points and left arguably 10 points on the field. Yeah. And lo- last time we got, we gave up 35 points and lost the quarterback for three games. So, I-, I consider today probably as good as it could have got. Like, if anything, I'd be more worried if I was a Bills fan right now because that game was far too close for far too long. Yeah. Against a one and six team. Yeah. Um, I say I think the defense played well. I think it definitely made a difference. Brian Flores calling the plays. I mean, I'm guessing that's what happened. He had the play sheets always seemed to be on the radio every time they, they flashed him on the sideline as if he was calling the plays. Hmm. Um they seemed more aggressive. They played better. Let's be honest. They were able to stop this team more often than they've stopped any team in the last what four or five weeks. So, yeah. um, I think it had an effect. Um, I think, it, you know, I, I'm of the, the opinion, like, I know people, everyone wants to sack the front office and everyone wants to sack the, the head coach. I, I'm i keeping them all right now and I'm letting them go, go through the growing pain. I don't believe they forgot how to coach because right now I've got an eight game, an eight game sample size this year compared to the last 32 games where we had him down as a, a coach of the year candidate. I don't think he suddenly yeah. forgot how to do that. So yeah. I'm just going to go through the growing pains and suffer it this year. Um, if I end up giving up next season, fine. Let's be honest. All the teams that have got new head coaches this year, a lot of them are struggling too. It's not yeah. as simple as plug in a new head coach and everything's fixed. You know, like the, essentially a lot of the fan base want us to do what the Jets have just done. New quarterback, new head coach doesn't equal instant wins. So I, I'm I'm going through the growing pains. I go through the growing pains for a, a third-year player. So I'm going through them for a third-year head coach at this stage. I'm going to have to lose as well right now. In-season firing doesn't really help me at all, I don't think, at this stage. So Yeah. Um. So just, just in something else from Tua, um, I don't know what the question was, but he said, I don't have to do anything beyond the means of what the play tells me. I'm not going to be out there and be a hero. Asked about what he needs to do to cement his place as long term QB. Like, they, sorry, sorry to cut you off. No, no, all good. This is a former Patriots coaching staff, like a a former Patriots head coach. He wants someone who plays within the the definition of the offense. He doesn't want someone out there freewheeling. That's not the sort of quarterback play they want. Yeah. Um, Yes, it looks good. Yes, it gets the job done, but that's not what they want. Not yeah. by choice. They, they want a Mac. That's why Mac Jones is a perfect quarterback choice for New England. Because you, you he does, he does what he's told to do. Yeah. You came on the podcast and said, I'm worried that the dope, that the Patriots are going to pick Mac Jones. Exactly. For exactly that reason. Perfect fit. He's not going to free will. Let's be honest, right? You don't see Mac Jones or a quarterback that Brian Flores wants make that lateral that Josh Allen tried to make today. Yeah. Because that's insane. Like, yeah, they're a good team, and yes, they should be beating us. You shouldn't be passing. Like, just, just suck it up, take the sack, you know, move on. It's all, it's also like, it's <sighs> some 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 of the the routes that our receivers are being told to run. To me, they make no sense. So, again, even even if we bring in Watson and we're making these, you know, we're getting Jalen Waddle on these like. You know, five yard drag routes. What's realistically what's Watson going to do outside of he might make a make a guy miss and then you know tell Waddle to go deep 
and then throw it deep as he's kind of falling over. And yeah, maybe one or twice it's a massive play down the field and we go, yeah, great. And the other times it's an inception. We go, dude, why did you just do that? It's like, I'm, I'm in no way comparing Fitz and Watson. In no way am I doing that. But we literally just came off a quarterback who he called Fitz magic. But again, it's like, Fitz. He's also called Fitz tragic. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm, in, I'm in no way saying Watson is a fit, tragic, fit, magic kind of quarterback. I'm in no way saying that. But I can understand at the end of last season when the Dolphins were 10 and 6 and people thought, well, if you took Watson in this team with this defense and you give him all full of Jalen Waddle, then yeah, the Dolphins are going to win the Super Bowl. We are 1 and 7 right now and the defense can't stay off the field. What is Watson going to do? You know, and also you, you you give away all your capital to try and fix any of the problems that you do have. All of a sudden, you've got two expensive corners that you're going to need to replace at some point. You've got Will Fuller on a one-year contract. You've got Devontae Parker coming to the back end of a contract. You've got Mike Saint because he needs a contract and you need O-line help badly. And you're going to run out of free agency dollars and you've got no early draft picks to do it with. Yeah. And even if you did, your recent early draft picks are not exactly panning out the way you expected them to. A lot of them. Um, so I don't know if I'm willing to to give up the capital it's going to take to get Watson on this team. I mean, that's forgetting all the legal stuff. Yeah. Just Watson as a player, because I think the legal stuff stops this ever from happening. But uh, you know, it's all right. Yeah. You're saying today that you know it's going to happen if his legal stuff is sorted. Well, yeah, I'd be playing if I could play football. Yeah, like you know, we want to talk absolute nonsense and stuff that doesn't happen. Then yeah, let's do that. But. Well, here's, here's, here's another great quote from Tua. And we're literally recording as the guys are coming in. Tua was asked about the lack of long plays. And Tua, Tua's response was, that's what I'm given as far as plays as far as far plays available. I'm going to take what's given. That's it's something to literally what I just said, that yeah. if the plays are, okay, we're going to have Jaseki on a, on a five-yard in, Waddle on a five-yard, on a two-yard slot underneath, Parker on a 10-yard curl route. It's like, well, who, who's going deep? Like, it's not, it's, to me, it's not like you chuck on the, the, you know, the all 22 and two is, is consistently missing guys down the field wide open. No one They're is running that. Yeah. Right. So, they, don't, they don't run that stuff. And, you know, you can't you can't suddenly make people do it because they want them to play within the offense. Like, that's what's cool. That's what's cool. Yeah. So, again, so like, like, like I said before that quote came out, is it a matter of, the offense are calling these plays because they think Tua can't throw downfield. But you watch Tua in Alabama and Tua can throw downfield. Tua threw a massive, you know, not a massive bomb, but Tua threw a downfield pass on fourth down to Mike Jasicki. Yeah. Like, I do. Really, so, so, so what you're saying? No, I was going to say, the, the last couple of weeks, um, especially the interception in London, I, quite, I, I did wonder if some of the deep throws were taken away by the rib injury and the fact that he's still playing in pain. Um, and that the talk isn't quite there. Um, and I wondered if that was, was having an effect because they do call it now and again. But let's be honest, like the Dolphins hitting a long play is like trying to win the lottery because not only do you need the, the, the guy to get open and we don't exactly have a lot of receivers that are known for getting separation, but also the own line has to hold up, which it, yeah. it collapses every other play. So if all those things happen to come together on one play, he's going to have a chance to hit it. Like even on the fourth down play, he had to evade pressure first before he was able to make that throw because yeah. they couldn't they couldn't hold up long enough for that route to develop. So, I mean, to be honest, I think part of the reason for not calling anything deep is that you can't guarantee you can hold up long enough to to run those routes. Yeah, um, we were calling an hour after the game, and Flores still hasn't come down yet. And again, we've both been in Dolphin press, press conference in the past two three weeks, like. He's the first one out. Um, yeah. I think everyone, from what I'm reading, everyone's come out who's meant to come out, apart from Brian Flores. Um, I kind of don't want to ask you why you think that is, because by the time this comes out, who would have we'll A, one come out, or two, we will know. But, you know, as we're recording this, why do you think Flores hasn't come out an hour after the game? <laughs> um, I mean, maybe he's trying to justify himself to ownership. Um, I... I, I I just struggle to believe that a decision is going to be made off the back of this game. A game that, like you say, most people had down as a loss in the off season. I, I don't know if, you know, we haven't won in Buffalo for a long time. And when we did, it was on a, it wasn't on a last second field goal. So, you know, 
it's not exactly a happy hunting ground for us in the first place. I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't, we wouldn't be making some sort of groundbreaking decision based on this. Yeah. Um, now, whether that decision was made beforehand, I don't know. Are they discussing trading for a quarterback? I don't know. Because I'm guessing things are going to move quickly if that's the case. Um, I say, you know, my feelings, I hope that's not the case. But maybe it's a meeting with Chris Greer. I don't know. Um, I didn't. I, I must say, I missed half time, but I didn't see any shots of Stephen Ross at the ground today. I, yeah, I didn't see half time. So yeah, I was so, half in, in a pub, so I didn't see what happened at half time. Yeah, so um, I, you know, I mean, it, if he wasn't there, then I doubt anything's happening in regards to firing right now. But it, it does seem strange. I imagine maybe part of it is he's just trying to cool off. He was obviously hot on the sideline a number of times. We saw when when he was at the presser in London a coach that was deeply unhappy. And I can imagine coming into a room where there was like four of us and with most of us being British media compared to facing the same uh, Miami media that he faces every week might not be a great recipe for success if you're in a particularly bad mood and maybe cooling down first is is a better way to, um, you know, compose yourself before facing the media. But, you know, rather than say something that you're going to regret or be used against you. And plus, like, we all know... What the questions are going to be because before the game, yes. there's, there's Watson stuff. Tua's had a game where he's thrown an interception and, has a, and had a Russian touchdown, but you know, didn't have a the perfect game that Dolphins fans want him to have. So the questions are going to be Watson based. So it's also yeah. like, you know, which he's not going to like because he didn't like it when he had to answer one at the end of the week when he tried yeah. to put it to bed for, for good. Which, and again, you know, he puts it to bed on Friday, two of the callback for the rest of you know, 2021. And then two days later, it's yeah. The Dolphins, um, Dolphins, the Texans, the same negotiation for Watson. It's like, well, then, you know, why did you have me come out on Friday and say that this was happening? If literally forty-eight hours later, before the game, it's being leaked from someone that there's still negotiations going on. So, um, I like obviously, you come and done this massive favor. I don't see the point in trying to stay here and you know pad this out until Flores comes out because Flores isn't going to tell us anything, nothing at all. <laughs> He doesn't. Um, he never does. Yeah. You know, so, he, the only time you're going to hear anything groundbreaking is if they were to make a coaching decision. He's not even if they've just if they've just sat there and decided to trade for Deshaun Watson. He's not coming out telling you. So yeah, and and that's yeah. the thing. Unless so, and the flip side is that if the trade has been made, then the reporters wouldn't know about it because they'll be checking their phone. So yeah, if the trade has been made, then there's nothing Flores can do about it because you know. They'll have it on their phone. Ratchet would have said the trade being trade being finalized. You ask what you ask on Flores, and it's like, well, it's cast out the bag. So what do you want me to do? So he's listen. going to come out and he's going to say we need to execute better. He's going to say we can't take as many penalties. He's going to say we can't have as many drops and we can't we can't have have as many um, what's the word I'm looking for fundamental errors when it comes to those penalties. You know, yeah. a bunch of those are a pre snap penalties. They, they they can't happen. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, I know people really hate what Flores said in his press conference is, but again, what do you want him to say? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, like, we all know what's, go- what's going on. Like you say, we know what the questions are going to be. We already know what the answers are going to be. There's no, you know, he's he's not going to come out and say, yeah, we were terrible. Yeah. Like, even if they were, that's not, he can't say that. So, yeah, who knows? Listen, I said this would be a short episode. Um, we'll jump into bonus time very, very quickly. I think I think I'm at a stage in this season where I don't see the point in doing hour long reviews of games the Dolphins have lost because it's it's upsetting. I'm just happy to send that two AM in the morning and I can <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um but you know, stay tuned for bonus time. Um thank you very much for working with us so far this season. It's been an ugly season, but what can you do? Um, you know, go time dolphins. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Um before I even no jump into bonus time. Lee, where can they find you? You know, plug the podcast, plug everything you can. Just at uh, Dolphin UK Pod and Five Yard Lee on Twitter. I, mean, but, you know, I try and stay a bit more positive about about things. <laughs> try and try and look at the upside of things. Let's be honest. So we, we all see what what the bad is, right? Let's try, yeah. let's try and put pick some good out of it. Let's let's see if this if there is some improvement. I think I think there has been in the last few weeks. I don't think it's as you know. I don't think it's still spiraling downhill. If anything, I think it's getting better. Yeah, um, 
you know what? And I think, if anything, that's an even better reason to go check out the podcast because you probably get a lot more positive vibes <laughs> than you do here. Um, Flores is now out in in the press conference, so we'll kind of see what we can do in bonus time. But, you know, for Kadeem Simmons, joining me this week, Five Yard Lee, hopefully, fingers crossed, Charlie Touche will be back next episode as he, you know, overcomes pneumonia. But, um, yeah, you know, like, share, subscribe, go Tam Dolphins. All right, safe. Podcast that's for the fans and by the fans. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Don't waste no time. Cool, man. So very, very quickly, and I will keep it very brief. Um oh no, we didn't mention this. Um Preston Williams didn't play for disciplinary reasons. What did you make of that? I'm not surprised. He he, he was literally pictured laughing after dropping a dropping a pass last week. I, I can't mm. imagine Brian Flores is gonna gonna stand for that whether he uh whether they're winning or losing, quite frankly. Um just not good enough. Yeah. Um, and at the moment, like let's be honest, Preston has no worth to us. He played. He played awful last week when he was healthy, and the rest of the time he's not healthy. He's undrafted. Yeah. Like, just move on, take a chance on somebody else. Yeah, I know. You know, me and Charlie love Kirk Mavis. So I love see Kirk Mavis. Um, we'll very yeah. quickly go through what we have from Brian Flores. Um, he said on the Preston Williams stuff for disciplinary reasons, he wasn't on the trip. We'll, we will visit him that in the morning. But I expect him to be with us. Let's see. Um, he said it was more execution on Buffalo's part more than lack of execution on our part. People aren't happy with that. Um, no, because that, that means you got outplayed by a better, better team. But yeah. also, we expected that. If this team was as good as we thought they were, we could have lost this game the same way that we did. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not sure that's, that, that people should, A, take that out of, out of proportion, or B, be surprised by it. Yeah, it's... Not, yeah. Um... But Flora said he spoke with Stephen Ross and Chris Greer after the game, but that is not usual. Yeah, but that is not usual. He also indicated it took some time to sit and think about things. Then it's like he said, it's your one and seven. This is even worse than when we meant to be really, really bad. Like, yeah. I have no problem with him sitting down, reevaluating, because again, the questions are going to be Watson based and about his future. So I have no issue with that. Um, yeah. We also had, he was asked about Tua. He said, like I said, Two is our quarterback. Two is our quarterback. So there you what go. A, what a surprise. Yeah. Um and I'm glad he it. glad he decided to um, you know, make sure he had his head on straight before he before he met the media. Like only bad things happen if you don't. Yeah, exactly. Um and yeah, he was also asked yeah, why he took why he came out so long. And he said, Yeah, he just kind of just sat there and said spoke to players and trainers. Um he was asked about his job security. He tells me worried about the players. I'm worried about getting them better. So no. And again, it's listen. People that say you know fire Flores and and you no know, blow it all up. What are you blowing up? You're not blowing up a playoff team. And we were one game away from the playoffs last year. And Flores probably had we got to the playoffs, been you know coach of the year. I am not yeah. blowing this team up until I know for a fact that you know that, no like the, the Lions nearly got shut out today. And that's like seven games into a new regime. Like, yeah. Let's let's be honest, right? If this team had played the way they did today, the last two weeks, they would have won games. If the defense had played the way they had today, yeah, they know. they haven't played that way in weeks. And to be honest, the game that we thought would turn the tide was was the one in London, and they played without a back end of the defense. Yeah, you know, yeah. We, you know, like I said earlier, that that Falcon game, two were you know after bad interceptions, two were gave us a lead. You know, with two minutes left, two minutes thirty seven seconds left. If the if the defense holds out, then we win that game. We didn't hold out, we lost, we lost again this week. Listen, it's unless unless you know Watson magically sorts out his legal issues, I doubt he the quarterback, you know, well, come Monday, come Tuesday. Um and yeah, well, listen, that's all you can say. For all the reports that have said that he'll only tra- only waive his no trade clause for Miami, let's find out how much he wants to be a Miami Dolphin because he'll settle all these out of court and do what the Dolphins ask of him. Yeah, 
And it, and if not, he never wanted to be a dolphin that bad. <laughs>